This background and protocol video is meant to supplement Lab 7, which is giving us an opportunity to explore different differential and structural stains that we first saw in Lab 2. Remember, for those earlier labs, 1 through 6, a lot of you were at home and unable to really participate in these labs to the same extent as the people who were there in person. Um, there was also a lot of stuff that we just saw images of or saw the slides, and so we really didn't get to explore the protocol. So part of the goal of Lab 7 is to really dive into the protocol. As I was going through and identifying videos on YouTube with visualizations of those protocols, I realized that there was really no video that adequately demonstrated the HISS method, which is a method of capsular staining that we actually use when we do this lab in person. So if you bought the Fresno City or Clovis Community Lab Manual that was listed at the bookstore, this corresponds with Lab 11. Um, the author, the primary author is Waters, so that's why it says Waters et al. And it's titled Microbiology, a Manual of Laboratory Experiments. So the full HIST protocol or HIST method is listed there for capsular staining. Um, and then this supplementary video goes with Lab 7 for the kind of online hybrid version of Microbiology Bio 31. So I'm going to start by giving some background information. Some of this will be review from Lab 2. Some of it will be review from uh, staining and functional anatomy. So a little bit of combination of lab and lecture, but really getting into capsules, capsular staining, and the HISS method. So this slide should be familiar to you. You've seen it in a few different contexts, but it really speaks to the charge of a stain and how that influences its ability to interact with a cell. Remember that most cellular material tends to be pretty negatively charged, whether it's proteins or the lipid, uh, phospholipid membrane, a lot of that cell stuff tends to be negatively charged. So if you think about magnets, remember that opposites attract. The positive side of one magnet will stick to the negative side of another magnet. So when we talk about the acidity or basicity of a stain, we know that basic stains are positively charged and they're going to be binding to those negatively charged cell structures, opposites attract. So that's how we get simple staining. The dye is sticking to the bacterial cell and it's creating a dark image on a light background when we use bright field microscopy with our compound light microscopes. We also saw a demonstration of what it means to do a negative stain. So remember, when we're talking about different stains or different tests, positive and negative mean very different things depending on what type of test you're talking about. So a negative stain is different from um, a gram-negative organism. It's different from being negative for an acid-fast test. So we've talked about a lot of tests already. Please try to keep them separate in your head. When we're talking about the charge of the stain, a negatively charged stain is going to be like trying to hold two negative poles of two separate magnets up to one another. That dye is not going to stick to the cell structures that are negatively charged. They're going to be repelled and instead that dye is going to pool in any other location on the slide. So it's basically staining the background and creating a negative image. So back in the day when people used to print photographs, we would get negatives, which were those reverse colors. That's kind of what this looks like. And now this cell is going to be bright and light on that bright field microscopy background. And the background itself is actually going to be darkly stained. So in these two images, we see two stains of E. coli. The one on the left, has been heat fixed and it's been stained with a basic positively charged stain. So that's a simple direct stain. With this indirect negative stain, we are not heat fixing. So this means that we're not going to shrink the cell size at all. We're not going to disrupt the arrangement. And if the cell membrane or wall or membranes are too sensitive for heat fixing, then this allows us to visualize it without having to damage any of those cell structures. 
we're not really diving into flagellar stains or motility stains in this class, but just a side note that that's another situation where you really don't want to be heat fixing. You really want to be cautious of the outside structure of the cell. So we're going to get back to this idea of charge and a negative image here in a little bit. So just a quick side note, in lecture, you learned about the glycocalyx. This is also pronounced glycocalyx. Either way, it is totally fine. The pronunciation really doesn't matter. What you should focus on is the fact that a glycocalyx in general is this sugary or protein filled layer that is basically extracellular material. So let's think about that word. So when we think about the glycocalyx, um, trying to make sure that this shows up in the recording, there we go. So the glycocalyx, focusing on that specifically, is extracellular. So this is extracellular material, extra meaning outside, And then cellular, meaning of the cell. So on this image over here, we see this capsule, which is a specific type of glycocalyx. And we see the cell right here. This looks like a um, diplobacillus or diplobacilli. And we see that the capsule is outside of that cell. So specifically, a capsule is a special kind of glycocalyx that is really firmly attached to the cell wall. Some glycocalyces are really messy and sloppy. They help form biofilms or um, slimy layers. They're still really useful for protection and adherence, but they're less tightly bound to the cell structure than the capsule. So what the capsule ends up doing is really protecting the cell from something called phagocytosis. And that's the um, kind of tracking, adherence, engulfment, and breakdown of bacterial cells by various um, immune cells. So we'll talk about that when we talk about immunology. But you should be aware that within the same species, there might be some members that are non-encapsulated, who don't have a capsule, and some that are capsulated, that do have a capsule. And those capsulated cells are going to be very resistant to um, attack by our own immune system, meaning that they have an aid in their virulence and pathogenesis. So those capsules, it turns out, are actually completely non-ionic. They don't have a charge, so they're not positively charged or negatively charged. They're non-ionic. So they're not going to be binding to basic or acidic stains. And that means that we cannot directly stain them. So we are going to use indirect staining and a couple of extra steps instead. Just to really emphasize this idea that we care about viewing capsules because of pathogenicity, these capsules really do help protect the bacterial cell and aid in its virulence. They can actually break down our antibodies, which um, they can help to release different enzymes that cleave apart those antibodies, meaning we can't even target them or coat them or flag them for breakdown. And so that might lead to blocked or incomplete phagocytosis. So our immune system, especially that innate immunity where we're just kind of attacking general stuff that gets into our body, um, as well as adaptive immunity in terms of um, humoral immunity, that will make a lot more sense later in the semester or if you've already taken physio, basically anything where you really need antibodies that is going to be impaired by the presence of a capsule. So we really do care about the presence of capsules. So when we're thinking about what we need, in addition to just stains or decolorizers or counter stains in order to visualize the capsules, 
it's important for you to understand about something called bovine serum albumin or even just albumin. So when you see a word that ends in IN, like albumin, that's telling you that it's a protein. And remember, proteins tend to be negatively charged. So this protein in particular is something called a plasma protein. It's found in the plasma of blood, and it's found in humans, chicken, cows, and many other animals. So when we're talking about bovine serum albumin, we're talking about this protein that's extracted from cow plasma, and we can abbreviate this as BSA. So if you see BSA referenced in a laboratory, maybe as a buffer or as a suspension, that's bovine serum albumin. So that is going to stick to the slide. We have to really make sure that we're not using too much because then it will congeal. If we don't use enough, then it's not going to create a thin film across the slide. But the albumin basically forces the dye to stick to the slide, even though it normally wouldn't. And that creates a negative stain effect. So we have this dye that's going to be positively charged. It's going to stick to this negatively charged protein and basically color in the entire background. So if we have a slide and we have bacterial cells on the slide, and some of those have a capsule, this negative stain is going to die basically, or sorry, this positive stain um, is going to stick to this negative protein and it's going to die basically the entire background because that's where the albumin is. So the albumin is completely covering the slide and when we add the dye, it's going to stick to all of that albumin. It's also going to stick to the cells themselves. And the only thing that is not going to have that dye stuck to it is going to be the capsules. So the thing that we're looking for is going to be bright um, and not stained. So this is an indirect stain and it kind of has this negative stain effect because you're dyeing everything except what you actually want to look at. So this is what that ends up looking like when you're not just sketching with a stylus in PowerPoint. This is an actual image of a negative stain or um, so not a negatively charged stain, uh, but a positively charged stain that has a negative stain effect, so an indirect stain to view those capsules. And we're going to use this dye called carbal fusion. So that's producing this reddish pink color. Sometimes it's spelled as one word, sometimes it's two. It really doesn't matter as long as you know that this is a basic stain that is directly staining the um, cells and the albumin and then indirectly helping us to visualize that capsule. So the dye is sticking to both the albumin and the bacterial cell. The only unseen part is that capsule which appears as a halo. So for example here we see a really nice bacterial cell. We see this whole background colored pink because of the albumin. And right here in this glowing halo, we have that capsule. And I promise I have really nice handwriting. It's just really hard to do this even with the stylus. Okay, so we are getting, in this case, a negative stain effect, even though we're using a positive dye. The positively charged basic stain, carbofusion, adheres to the negatively charged cell. 
It also adheres to the negatively charged albumin protein that's distributed across the surface of the slide. The only unstained part is the capsule, which is not charged, it's non-ionic. It's not going to bind to this dye, and instead it's appearing as a halo. So that's kind of the background information on the stain. Um, I don't have a lab set up at home, unfortunately, so I can't record myself using all these dyes, but I did try to put some animations together to show what this process looks like for the actual protocol that we do. Again, if you look on YouTube, you'll find plenty of capsule stains. It's just not the specific protocol that we use at Madeira. Okay, so getting into the protocol, I'll basically break this up into clear, concise steps. Um, again, as you're going through this activity, you should be trying to put the different terms that I've given you in that word bank together into a diagram or flow chart or series of bullet points or sentences, whatever makes sense to you. But these next slides, I think there's around nine or so of them. Those are going to be really helpful for structuring your flowchart or description of a protocol. So the first step is to take a loopful of water or saline solution. Um, that saline solution will make a little bit more sense once we talk about osmosis and osmotic stress and also after you work through activity one. We're going to take a sterile wire loop, dip that into the water, and then we're going to add that to the slide. So remember that's about 10 microliters, just a small amount of water enough to um, kind of suspend the bacterial cells into this solution. So the next thing we're going to do is add a loopful of albumin. Again, we really want this to be a light loopful because if we have too much, That albumin is going to congeal and get too thick and create lumps that will disrupt our ability to view the cells. So again, we're going to add about 10 microliters. Um, it's going to mix with the existing water and suspend it, so it will be an increase in volume. And now we're going to add a small amount of our bacterial inoculum and suspend that. So we have this bacterial culture over here. It's turbid, it has a bunch of cells, and these cells, or at least some of them, are encapsulated. They have a capsule around them. So we're going to add some of that. And again, we're increasing the total volume. So now we're at about 30 microliters of volume. And the next step is to spread this across the surface of the slide like we did with negative staining. So we're taking a second clean slide, holding it at about a 30 to 40 to 45 degree angle over the suspension, kind of aligning it with the edge, um, so the edge of the new clean new slide is in that smear, and we're going to slowly and smoothly drag it across without allowing this to dry. So now we have this spread across the surface of the slide. So now we're going to take the slide clamp it with a tong or a clothespin, and then hold it over the flame until it smokes and remove it quickly. So we have not true heat fixing, but we have everything set in place. So now we're gonna let it cool and we're going to saturate it. We're going to flood it with Zeal Nielsen Carbol Fusion. So there's different types of carbal fusion. Some of them work for capsule staining. Some of them work for different acid fast stainings. So we really have to make sure that we're using the right kind of carbal fusion for our protocol. We're going to saturate the sample with this carbal fusion for just 10 seconds. And this animation is a little bit wonky, sorry. I tried several times to fix it. 
So now we have our smear saturated with Zeal Nielsen Carbol Fusion for 10 seconds. So we're going to let that sit for 10 seconds. Remember, there are some situations where you might need to do 15 or 30 or 60. It really depends on how thick your culture is, um, how long it takes for the dye to migrate and penetrate, how long it takes for it to diffuse and move across the sample, um, and really the extent to which you need the dye to stick in place. So we have this surface that's basically covered in stuff that's going to stick to the dye. We just need to flood it for 10 seconds. So now we're going to gently rinse it with water, and we're just going to pass it underneath the slow running water just a few times and then we're going to let it air dry so it's just going to sit there and we're not going to blot it with some of the other samples um, you did blot using that special paper that bibulous paper so we would open it and put it in there and blot we're not going to do that for this capsule staining. We're just gonna let it air dry. And then finally, after it's air dried and not blotted or disrupted in any way, we're going to visualize it using oil immersion microscopy. Remember the key to oil immersion is to have that oil touching both the lens and the sample and the oil is filling in that space and concentrating the light so that as light shoots up, it's going straight into the lens and is not diffracting outwards. So we're not gonna have any diffraction or refraction. So this is an actual image from when I taught this course in spring 2019. This is what one of our stains looked like. And to zoom in and orient you on this, here we see a few different cells that are capsular stained. It does look quite different from the official pretty images that we see in like the textbook or earlier in the slides, but it's really important for you to be able to interpret your images, even if they're not as clear as a professional slide. So to situate you here, we can see the stain adhering to cells and it looks very dark magenta, dark purple, dark fuchsia in this image. The stain is also lightly adhering to the albumin, which was diluted and spread across the background, creating a negative stain effect even though this is an indirect stain with a po uh, positively charged stain. And the stain does not adhere to the capsule because the capsule is non-ionic. That's leaving this bright white halo around the cells, which again is slightly hard to see, but you can kind of see right there and right there. We do have a little bit of a halo around these slides. So this is the protocol. I know it's not really the same as watching a video of someone in a lab or really doing it yourself, but hopefully this was a little bit more visualization than just reading the steps. Thank you.